cool um moving on for the fucking clubbing stuff i want to mention this because i feel like this needs to be said going forward because i saw this topic on the techno subreddit one of my favorite ones on reddit and i wanted to talk about this please so this person posted on the techno subreddit the following do mainstream female DJs receive more criticism from community than their male counterparts? Interesting question, you'd think, right? Let's read the body. Obviously, there are some big female DJs I've earned respect to the community, um, and I've heard much. I've never heard much criticism because of their undeniable talent. Um, examples are um, a person called if, An, uh, Anfisa Letiagayo, Helena Half, Ellen Allian, for example. But DJs like Amelie Lenz, Charlotte DeWitt, Nina Kravitz, Bless Madonna, Peggy Goo all seem to get a lot of unnecessary hate and unfounded accusations of ghost projection. There's a clear difference to me between a DJ not being someone's cup of tea or taste and a regular misogynistic comment I see whenever DJs get brought up and no one seems to mind even though it's supposed to be the most inclusive community. Male DJs who have reached similar heights of success aren't without criticism and online jabbings as well, but they don't seem to carry the same vitriol I see with female DJs. Is there something I'm missing? I've seen every DJ I mentioned in this post and, and was only really let down by Blessed Madonna since it was the most house set, so I moved on for another stage of the festival I was attending. But I definitely didn't leave thinking she was awful DJ. That didn't deserve the recognition she received. I think this is a whole lot of shit because I've said it plenty of times before that I just think in general, the DJ industry, the DJ scene, whatever, it's such a competitive industry. There's so little opportunities. There's so there's too many DJs and not enough opportunities. So people have to do whatever it takes to get in. And it's no surprise to me anyway, as a up and coming, you know, underground fucking hobby dj guy that really and truly there's not a lot of like you know brotherhood sisterhood in the scene everyone's sort of like every man everyone for themselves but it makes sense because it's hard to get in and once you get in you find your little spot and you just keep it to yourself it makes complete sense but with that who's gonna obviously breed a lot of toxicity a lot of backstabbing a lot of infighting all this sort of shit but in general in general things haven't been better things are, haven't been better than they are now it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter what you look like it doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is you can make it it's going to be hard of course like most things that are worth that are worth having it's going to be difficult but you can make it and if anything i hope in 2024 we move on from this male female fucking debate about djs and stuff and we just start talking about are you good or are you shit because there's no excuses anymore no one's gonna be ribbing into you more because you're a woman more because you have your tits out more because your bums out than somebody else now people are going to be debating are you good or are you shit that's the main thing and i think for some reason there is a reluctance to just call out people who are shit and sometimes unfortunately don't know why maybe because they're so high profile but there are some women djs who are terrible who are legitimately no better than people that you'd see in your local clubs and there's probably local women in your clubs who far are far more deserving of those spots than them right that's just how it is we don't care that's how the cookie crumbles but i'm just fed up of the whole like male female debate thing because it really doesn't matter if anything if you're a woman or if you're you know if you're a woman nowadays you probably have way more opportunity to make it than any other time in history most likely now there's way more um promotions out there that are geared more towards booking more women on lineups there's way more agencies and booking age talent agencies and shit that want to sign more people there's way more promoters trying to diversify their lineups there's way more appetite for it in the market there is no barriers really that are really limiting you from actually getting involved as opposed to just what's going on in your head what you're allowing to yourself to listen to and shit there are no more barriers there's nothing really holding you back for the most part if anything if you just put your foot forward if you actually just bet on yourself if you actually choose yourself if you actually back yourself you can actually make it but what's missing for me is a little bit of critique 
What's missing for me is some honesty. What's missing for me is a love and dedication to the music. What's missing for me is an appreciation for the art form. What's missing for me is a is this kind of connection with the audience. What's missing for me is authenticity. That is what's actually missing. And if we get back to just calling that shit out and raising the levels of people's ability to perform and provide a good show, things will be far better as opposed to women and men. It's like nobody gives a fuck. If anything, if anything, the one person, the one person out there who's actually the most marginalized and the most fucking overlooked, the most fucking not included, is probably guys that look like me. If I turned up to certain parties looking like Heady One, looking like Tion Wayne, dressed like Central C, looking like Dave, I probably wouldn't get in. That's the funny thing. If I was dressing like some of those very well-established, super successful, super rich UK rappers that a lot of those people in that scene don't know, if I turned up looking like those guys to some of the techno parties I go to, I guarantee you I wouldn't get in. That's the actual fucked up shit about the scene. Not the male women. women, women. It's, it's all preaching exclusivity. It's all preaching we are here to service the marginalized and it's a space for everybody. Multi it's preaching all this shit. But really and truly, if it's a certain type of black they want. It's a certain type of black guy they want. If I dress like Tion Wayne, if I dress like Heady One, if I come in looking like Burner Boy, I'm not getting in. But if I dress a certain, if I dress another way, oh, suddenly you're getting in now. That's the main issue, really. That lack of real diversity and inclusion is maybe the reason why things are so stale on the dance floor. Why it's a little bit like, you know, it's a little bit fucking, you know, a little bit salt and pepper, you know? It's a little bit spicy mayo, you know? It's not that great. Maybe that's the reason why. But apart from that, Less focus on the male and female shit and more focus on the fucking quality of the work and the quality of the art form so we can all raise our levels together. That's what I personally think because I think this whole debate about male female thing is redundant. Even if you are a woman and you're getting criticism for your looks and shit, it's just the nature of the beast. Women on social media, unfortunately, get just way more attention. Way more attention is going to bring way more input. Way more input is going to bring positive and negative. It's just the nature of the game. Unfortunately, it's what it is. If you don't want criticism, you don't want attention, you don't want people talking about your looks, wear a fucking veil when you DJ. I don't know what to tell you. It just kind of is the game of the game. And sometimes if you're smart, you can lean into it and make it work for your own, you know, for your own interest. But it's not really that deep. My personal opinion is it's not really that deep. What are you guys saying in the chat? So I'll see some comments here. Um, I heard about guy was rented out by um, Sean Puff. <laughs> yeah, probably was. Won't be surprised. It probably was. Um, fucking Bottega Veneta fucking rented it out that time, innit? So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Puffy did rent it out, to be fair. Um, he did some of his free coughs in the fucking... Oh, maybe I was in... Maybe I was in the same space that Diddy did, 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 did free coughs in. <gasps> maybe, I t maybe I... Maybe I... Without realising, took part in a free cough. <gasps> <laughs> um, um podcast says wasn't um wasn't fragma a group of women djs that seemed to massive in the late 90s and 20 I'm, I'm not too sure to be on this pod podcast of all's um shout out peggy goo if you're gonna make a male gaze comment is that she's a babe not that she's a fake talent yeah but i think peggy is another good one as well she she doesn't give a fuck she just keeps she just keeps on grinding um big up fashion road my guy what's good fashion road man bang your chest brother there are a lot of DJs that build an audience based on being good looking rather than skill same as music artists but if you point it out all hell will break loose hence why people are scared to critique exactly uh, exactly and it's not a bad thing like I said there's too many DJs not enough opportunities I myself am a good example of it I think I'm really fucking good I think I'm really really good at DJing really really good but guess what <laughs> I'm playing in my living room. <laughs> I'm playing on my fucking lap, all right? And there's a lot of people who are probably better than me who don't even play on their fucking lap. They're playing their head. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They don't even have any fucking MIDI controllers. There's just too many of us. No, so so if that's the case, I don't blame you if you're a, if you're a girl, if you're a woman, if you're a woman and you're born mildly attractive and you have an interest in DJing, why wouldn't you use your looks to get in? It's so hard to get in. Why wouldn't you? I don't blame you. 
But then when you get in with your looks and then you start complaining that everyone's commenting on your looks, it's like, come on, bro. If anything, it's a very complicated thing to kind of navigate because I feel like if you have good looks and you get in via that way, good. But you have to be very purposeful to kind of pivot away from it. You can't let that be your whole identity. And I think Nina Kravitz is a good example of it. Nina Kravitz has always been kind of sexy, sultry, mysterious, always has a, you know, she's always kind of got that like, she's always kind of got that half cocked mouth open, right? That little kind of like inviting, but not inviting. Like um, you, you can kiss me or I might bite you type of thing. But she's always been also an artist. Like, yes, people can look at her and think, okay, she looks attractive, but she's always been an artist. I feel like it's intentional. You have to be conscious of that. Well, I feel like nowadays, I think because the money's so good, you know, you, you see some of these girls in Ibiza who are legit models, right? Who happen to DJ. I don't blame them for just like standing behind a booth in a bikini because why not? Some guy's probably going to pay you, you know, what, 20 grand, 20 euros to stand behind a, a DJ booth with a, with a bikini on and just fucking look pretty and dance a bit. Why the fuck wouldn't you do it? But obviously, if you want a long term future in the industry, you have to be careful because if you keep sending out those signals, you're not too, you know, don't be surprised if you get back some bad energy, you know? Whether it's fucking weird promoters trying to touch you up, people in the crowd getting handsy, weird DMs, like, it just invites a uh, weird energy you have to be very conscious about it you know like very very conscious about it and i bet it's the same thing with men maybe it's not the same level but i think it's uh, probably the same thing you know if if a cute guy dj goes to a gay club i'm sure you know they probably fucking try and chew him up like he's fucking do you know what i mean like he's a piece of fucking kiwi so it is what it is um big up um dara dara you'd find who says, as a black raver myself, I agree 100% with you what you're saying about inclusivity. Raving in places like Madrid, um, for example, where the crowd is primarily white, you feel judged for being black most times. Exactly. There we go, Dara. There we go. Honestly, bro. Like, I've, I've honestly felt so sometimes performative and like cringe and inauthentic when I've been to these places especially places like Berlin, because you clearly see, like, what, what's going on. You see the type of, like, black they want, especially guys. Like, there's a particular type of black they want. Like, that kind of, like, Theophilus London kind of avatar, you know? You know what I mean? Like, that kind of, like, you know, you got the fucking hat, you got the little weird pose, you got the shitty fucking, you know, illustration tattoos and shit, you know? Weird nails, you know? Like, they want that caricature. But if I came in there and the tracks, like in a tracksuit and shit, suddenly I'm not, I'm not the right person for the, for the place. Why? Because of what I'm wearing. Like, that's what, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, so then, so then, you, so then, so then you end up seeing, you end up trying to like perform and play to get in, to be accepted. But then you also feel like, hold on, like I'm not being myself here. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a weird thing. It's a very, very strange thing. You feel very inauthentic. You almost feel like a, you almost feel kind of like, fake you know like it's just odd it's a weird feeling to honestly i'm not gonna lie it's very very strange and i've always felt like again because I, I love those spaces i want to be in those spaces i purposely go there because i like the parties i like what they do but you always feel like you have to kind of like perform and show up and like look a certain way for them to like feel comfortable around you because one thing is well when i go raving i don't like to like you know i'm really a big dude i don't want to like take up space and like give out weird energies I kind of want everyone to feel comfortable around me. So if I'm in there and everyone's like grabbing their bags or like looking at you weird or like, it's just, it makes you, makes me feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? I want to be comfortable. I kind of want to feel like I'm not being seen. I want to, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like Jacob Elodie. You know that picture of Jacob Elodie where he's always sitting on chairs and he acts like he's small. Like people are saying the meme, right? He always sits like he's petite. I want to like, I don't want to look like the way I look. Yeah, I want to kind of blend in. In my face, I'm like a. In my head, I'm like a very light skinned, very, very like frail, small little man. <laughs> but, but in person, I have this big face, this big body and shit, and I take up a lot of room. So maybe that's my problem, isn't it? I kind of have to just have to. I have to come to. I have to come to terms with who I actually am. <laughs> that's the, that's the truth of it. I have to come to terms with who I actually fucking am, man. And what I am is a mess. <laughs>